dear people, I'm Ginny Metherill. I'm a fourth generation witch. Today, it's my ever popular almanac series, which looks at all the rituals, rites and traditions that you can practice within your craft in February. So as with all these videos, I'm going to start with a general overview of the trends that happen throughout February, and then we'll move on to the nitty gritty daily witchcraft that you can do on what day and when. So with that said, let's move straight on to the overview for February. I'm sure that you're all aware February is very much about love. let's beat no bones about it is romantic love and sexual attraction. We've got some Valentine's Day for us humans and the same day applies to the birds because that's the day they get married on. The wonderful Wheel of the Year festival of Imolk on the 1st and 2nd of February which is all about sprawl and prana. More on that later though. We have the frog chorus beginning in this month. The beautiful dawn chorus starts up again. The violet, which is the love flower, starts to poke its head above the earth. Oh, I love February. I know I say this about every month, but really, it just is great to see a little more life coming into the world. I saw my first snowdrops yesterday and the excitement was extreme. Although February is the season of love, it is also quite cold still. We are ruled by the star sign Aquarius, which is in turn ruled by one of the ice giants, Uranus. And Uranus, that wonderful planet, when we look at it, it looks this beautiful blue green, doesn't it? But actually this is a frozen giant and that affects our planet too. But I can't help but like it because look at those beautiful rings around the outside. Those are ice rings and aren't they stunning? We only knew that Uranus had ice rings fairly recently. I think it was only about 20 years ago. Not sure on that though, so do correct me in the comments if you think I'm wrong. As I said, snowdrops appear in February. They're a symbol of cleansing, purity and hope. The old winter queen of Scottish tradition would be going round still in February and banging and bashing her staff on the ground. And wherever she bashed her staff, you would have the frosts appearing. Yet through these frosts, the hardy snowdrop would poke its pretty head. And this would make her scream with rage because it meant that her power was waning. February comes from the Latin word februar, means to cleanse, to clean, to purify, because this is the time for the spring clean. It's not just traditional, it is necessary. After the cold and damp, our homes are filled with clutter. So this is the time to start clearing it all out and throwing it away. Not just physically as well, you need to psychically cleanse your house. Great ways to do this are of course using incense. I love a bit of incense and I particularly find white sage excellent. Always use stuff that's been grown in a polytunnel in Devon or wherever part of the world you live in, not the stuff from California. And this is wonderful at really getting rid of all the negative energy. But do remember, when you're cleansing your home with sage, particularly get under the bed, because this is where a lot of negative entity often coils. When you're asleep, you'll tend to cleanse yourself naturally and refresh your body. And the negative energy sort of drops off you and pools under your bed. And, you know, this is where monsters come from. There are monsters under the bed, so get rid of them with some white sage. And lastly, but most importantly, February is the month for raising the serpent. Now, what this means is essentially to bring forth the sprawl or prana of the earth and of yourself, as this is fertility and new beginnings. Raising the serpent has happened in 
so many different cultures. M Moses in the Bible is shown as raising the serpent. He puts a bronze serpent on his staff, raises it up and nails it to a tree to cleanse the Israelites of their curse. Now, if that's not traditional witchcraft, I don't know what is. The Hopi people of North America also do the snake dance in order to bring the fertility and new beginnings to the earth. So, the Aztecs were known to raise a serpent and the traditional witch of the UK also has been known to raise the serpent. When I was younger, I might have done some raising the serpent myself. I don't do it now because it's a bit cold. Raising the serpent in traditional witchcraft is simply you would go to a sacred site with your coven. This sacred site was often an old well or an old cave, places where snakes would hibernate because you want to wake the serpent with your staff. And you do this sacred serpent dance and it is just symbolic that when the serpent is awake, the sprawl of the earth is able to rise up, not just into the plants and into the flora and fauna around you, but into yourself. A witch is known as traditionally, but I don't necessarily think this is true, but traditionally a witch is known to have her strongest energies in the spring. And there might be something in it. You might be more able, maybe. I don't know, I've never tested it. But your sprout or your prana or your magic is at its strongest traditionally in the spring. And this is why the local populace would bring the charms that you had given them throughout the year to be regenerated with the energy needed to keep those charms going in the springtime. The Celts also have a very similar raising the serpent. It is at this time when the breed snake emerges from Earth Mother to repopulate across the Earth. And, and a wheel of candles would be placed upon the head of the chief initiator of the ritual to symbolise the light that is coming. They do say that the American Groundhog Day is part of this raising of the serpent, but maybe it is, maybe it isn't, I don't know. So that is my overview of February, and a lovely overview it was too. Now let's get into the nitty gritty detail of the days. And of course, we have to start with the 1st of February, which is the beginning of the Wheel of the Year Festival of Emil, which is the brilliant festival celebrating the start of spring. Now, I'm not going to say too much about Imok here because I've done such a good video of it, which I will put up here for you. So do go and click on that and watch it after you've watched this one, of course, and it tells you all about Imok. The Feast of Imok starts on the 1st of February at sunset and finishes on the 2nd of February at sunset. So it's a sort of almost two day festival. It is a feast of dairy. And so one of the easiest ways to celebrate Imok is to just drink and eat some dairy products, have a butterboard, which I do mention in my Imok video. And everyone was like, what the hell is a butterboard? Very trendy on TikTok at the moment. Have a look there. It is quite fascinatingly strange. Of course, Imok was always celebrated with many dances and torches and other different but unholy rites. I mean, this unholy rites led forth to much ill conduct. And so in the ninth century, the current Pope at the time then replaced Imok with the purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary on the second, which is known as Candlemas. And if you're a Marian witch, today is the perfect day to light yourselves some candles to celebrate the Blessed Virgin Mary, who is a sort of mother goddess, is she not? And the festival of Imok. And I see no dichotomy by doing the two together. And if you want to add some real pagan traditional witchcraft into that, do a libation onto the earth with milk, which means simply pour milk or cheese or butter, whatever you prefer, onto the earth as an offering. The 5th of February is the date of the full moon. And the full moon is in Leo. Leo is incredibly energetic and it is a full moon full of hope and energy. It is known as the snow moon, the ice moon, the storm moon, all of which show that February is still a bit cold. And this full moon is high and bright, but full of the energy of Leo. 
Not only that, it's full of the energy of the Earth. The full moons are said to be at their strongest energetically in the spring. And the Romanese insist that it is now is the time to re-energise your crystal ball in the full moon of February or March. You would place your crystal ball by a lake so the ball is reflected in the lake by the light of the moon and therefore it would re-energise itself properly. However, we might not have a crystal ball. I keep bidding on them on eBay because I do love a crystal ball and I really want a vintage one but they go for hundreds if not thousands of pounds and I haven't quite got thousands of pounds just to spend on a crystal ball at the moment. However, I will do. I'm going to get one soon and then I'm going to proudly show you how to do crystal ball scrying. However, if, like me, you haven't got a crystal ball, the 5th is still a great day to re-energise your crystals. Simply place them on a windowsill in the light of the full moon and leave them there overnight to re-energise. The 5th of February full moon is also the best time of the year to hear the UK frog or toad chorus. So we've got a pond at the bottom of our garden, quite a big one, which is filled with frogs and toads. And I'm planning, because I've never heard it, to go down there on the 5th and listen out to see if I can hear them calling their mates. They're rather sweet. They grab them in a really tight embrace and don't let each other go until they have spawned. It's a rather sweet ceremony, should you ever see it. The 9th of February is the last day of the Chinese New Year Lunar Festival, which is the year of the rabbit, last seen in 2011. So if you're born then, you are a rabbit. Rabbits are terribly earnest, but they also love the moon. And so if you are a year of the rabbit person, then do go out and make sure that you use this year to practice your moon craft throughout it. The 12th to the 14th of February are known as borrowed days, meaning that they borrow the cold weather from January. And if they do, then it's going to be fair for the rest of the year. However, if it's fair on these days, it's borrowing the days from the summer and therefore it's going to be freezing cold for the rest of the year. I really hope it's going to be really cold on those two days because I'd rather two cold days in February and a really lovely hot summer because I am a summer witch. I say this, I'm a winter witch, a spring witch, an autumn witch, I'm bloody every witch whenever the seasons come round. I'm just like, oh wow, the seasons are so amazing, aren't they? If you have a cat in February, do pay attention to what the cat is doing. There is a traditional saying that goes, if a cat lies in the sun in February, she will creep behind the stove in March. Meaning if it's warm in February, it'll be bloody cold in March. So watch out and watch your cats. The 14th of February is of course St Valentine's Day and we all know this as the day for lovers. However, it is also the day that the birds get married. Isn't that sweet? It is said that they choose and marry their partners on these days and from this day onwards, it is when they start to build their homes together. Now, for all those people who don't have a partner on Valentine's Day, there is a lot that you can carry out, a lot of rites and rituals that you can carry out to make you dream of your partner or make you have a partner come to you. So, the Romani Gypsies believe that if you place a bay leaf under your pillow on the 14th of February, you will dream of your future lover and they will come quite soon, it is said. Likewise, a posy of violence, if picked on Valentine's Day and placed in a jar by your bedside table, will help you bring soft and refreshing sleep and dreams of your future partner. On St Valentine's Day, there's lots of superstitions about birds. And in fact, if you see birds flying overhead, they mean the following. If you see a sparrow flying overhead, you're going to marry a poor person, but you will be very happy. If a robin flies over your head on Valentine's Day, you're going to marry a sailor. If you see a goldfinch flying overhead, you will marry a rich man. 
there's lots of superstitions and so I'm going to put them here for you um, so that you can have a look and see which bird you'd like to have flying over your head on Valentine's Day. The 20th of February is the night of the new moon. Astrologers believe that new moons are a time of quiet contemplation before the time of growth and change. Each new moon has its own energy depending on what sign it appears in and this new moon is in the sign of Pisces. The new moon in Pisces is said to rule our intuition, innovation and psychic capabilities so now is a great time to study and enhance your spirit mediumship and improve them. In Cornwall, which is deeply pagan still, I keep saying this but it is, the 20th is also Nicanon Night. Nicanon Night is a night of mischief. Old Nick is an old name for the devil and therefore Nicanon Night is when children follow the devil and get up to mischief. They play Nicky Nicky Nine Doors, which is a form of cherry knocking I used to call it, where you, you know, knock on the door and then run away. So watch out in Cornwall because this is the night that Old Nick astrides the land. And in fact there is a lot of tales about this in Cornwall, about the devil footprints going across the Cornish countryside in the snow. Yeah, look it up on YouTube, you'll like it. The 21st of Feb is Shrove Tuesday, meaning that this is Pancake Day, where the British nation goes all out, makes pancakes and has lots of races with them. Why we do the racing, nobody knows, but we do and fun, isn't it? Then we have Ash Wednesday on the 22nd, that great Christian festival marking the start of Lent. Now I only mention it because the days around Ash Wednesday are all given names. We have Collop Monday, Shrove Tuesday, Ash Wednesday, Thritter Thursday where you cook apple fritters and most worrying of all is Kissing Friday. It was said that on this day that if you went about and kissed the girls you could do so without retribution. It just sounds a bit to me like um, boys are slightly physically attacking girls um, so don't do that. No Kissing Friday this year. And the last week in February, although I have no a special individual day witchcraft for this, I do want to tell you about a violet charm. Violets are those beautiful purple flowers that smell so sweet and glorious and they'll be poking their heads up at this time. Pick yourself a bunch of violets and wash them in spring water and make an infusion of them to drink in tea. Once you've drunk the tea, take the violets and mix them with goat's milk and allow the violets and the goat's milk to infuse together quietly. After an hour or so, take this and pat it into your skin and let it sit there. And this is an incredibly old fashioned charm to bring about the great beauty. So if you want to feel more beautiful, that's how to do it in February. If you have any February traditions, do let me know and leave me a comment. I'd love reading your comments and I'll be very interested to hear what you have to say. Otherwise, my Patreon Carver meeting is coming up um, in a couple of weeks or so, so there's plenty of time to join the Coven. So have a look on Patreon, it'll all be there for you. In the meantime, please don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps my channel. And I will see you in a couple of days. Bye.